Hey, welcome to IndieK 2015. I'm here with Ty Wei, yeah. and the game is Eleanor of Ire. Yeah. This is sort of an installation game. Yeah. It takes place in a cafe. Yeah. There's a murder. There is a possible suspect. There's a band. There's hopefully a nice cup of coffee yeah. waiting for you towards the end. Tell us about it. OK, uh, it's, uh, we, because we want to build a game, not only in a video game or not only in a screen or mobile device, we want to make a game in the real world. So we build a game in a real cafe, and we want to uh, let the game happen in the in surround us. Yeah, so people people get into cafe and they they order and they drink a cafe, and meanwhile they can play a game and through a tablet and they interact with the. Uh, they use tablet to interact with the decoration or the paintings or the cups in the cafe. So this game is about it's there's a band yeah. that is that is that is formed. They they played. This would be almost like a uh, a band that you would see at a at a cafe, yeah. and one of their members has been murdered. Yeah. There is a sign that it possibly is one of the other band members that yeah. might be. Uh, that might have done whatever yes. the murder there was, and so in this game, what are we trying? What is? What are all these puzzles pointing to? What do we? What are we learning as we're going around this cafe? Okay, because uh, the game is mainly talk about the uh, phenomena of the media press because they, uh, the, the journalists or the media, they often tend to report what they see, but there might be some other some other fact that they ignore with. So uh, the player is a journalist. They are invited to a press conference that happened in a real cafe. And they get involved to, into a murder mystery. But the suspect tell, tell them that it's not, uh, he didn't done it. And uh, something is left in the cafe. And uh, the journalist, the player, should uh, find out all the truths and uh, all the clues and uh, in, and find out what what is actually happened in this cafe and every player will get different answers. That's that's incredible. Uh, so even though everyone's sort of playing the same game, yeah. Yeah. everyone's going to get a different sort of answer or yeah. a different sort of like meaning. Uh, I mean, when you say answer, do you mean like everyone's going to point at a different person of like who done it? Yeah. Uh, they will choose different uh, different things to interact with, and because you we use a tablet, it's easy to control where to separate. So if he chose this this thing instead of last thing, it will go through a different total different storyline. And the killer might not be the guy, and you could be some other guy, or the story will uh, vary. We have four endings actually. And when you say you have four endings, is there? Like, is this saying that there is a right ending, or do you just have four endings depending on what you focus on in the game? Uh, it's, it's, it's written. Yeah, we write four endings, but uh, uh, we left some space, that some, we left some ambiguous space that people can imagine, imagine that why he have to do this or why she have to do this. Um, so what's really also remarkable about this game is that a lot of what you're deal dealing with in the cafe actually looks like a real cafe. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the puzzles uh, deal with different objects and different items within the uh, that looks like a traditional cafe. I know yeah. that I saw one where it was like there's a there's a painting on the wall and that you can use uh, an iPad or like a mobile device in order to open up like a. Uh, a, a puzzle by looking at it like a safe or something like that. Can you talk about like what was sort of the the intention of making sure that this may place kept the the appearance of a cafe instead of like say a you know a series of puzzles that you would just stumble upon? Uh, how did you manage to make puzzles that look like they live within the cafe itself. Okay, uh, all the things, uh, basically we use the, the cups, the paintings, just right in the cafe. Because we use a technology called augmented reality. So the, the game stuff, the clues, the hints, is within the, the pad, within the tablet. 
they use the camera to scan those things and it show different response and different they can interact with those real objects. Um, what do you think was the uh you know, what would you think was like one of the hardest moments or like one of the hardest things that you had to do in order to create this sort of like world? Oh, but, um, because we make the game out of the screen, so what people can do varies a, a lot. Uh, we, we can't, sometimes we can't control what will the players do because in a video game, the player only do like touch or something like keyboard action. But in the real world, they can, they might tear apart something, or they might scream, or they might move, move around. So it's really hard to control them. We can only uh, revise our game through tests. Uh, we ask a lot of people come here, and we interview them, and what. Uh, what do you feel about the game and uh, what can be done? Yeah, something like that. Uh, what, are, what are your plans after this? Are you looking to, to do more, uh, more games that are like, built within like, different places? Or yeah. are you looking to just take this, uh, what you have right now, into different areas? Uh, we, what we want to make, our goal is to turn the world into the game world. So the cafe is only our first step and it's easy to control and we can move this game to other cafe and what we want to do is it's like uh, something like touri tourism we can combine with touri tourism sites some sightseeing and uh, wherever where the where you live yeah we can put puzzle in the in the signs or in the mem in the in the flag or in wherever you want yeah, we want to do, do that. It sounds incredible. Well, thank you very much for yeah. sharing your game with us, and yeah. I hope to see it in more cafes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay.